Hi everyone, this is George Moore from Moore's Sewing Center in Southern California and together with my girls it's time for Sew Fun Club and this is a special edition for July and uh, this has actually been our fourth virtual Sew Fun Club and you know typically we would have this in the stores where we'd have uh, a guest speaker sometimes or a trunk show but we definitely always had show and tell so for virtual Sew Fun we also are going to have show and tell like before. So before I show you my show and tell, I'm going to show you what you potentially can win if you post a picture of your project, whether you're working on it uh, presently or a past project, you post it after this presentation. And for those who post, have a chance to win an incredible prize. It's actually a prize by the Floriani Company, and it's a value of over $499. Now, what's in the box? I'll show you what's in the box. There are all kinds of thread, there's designs, there's uh, stabilizers, there's a thread converter software, uh, there's uh, digitizing and, and uh, uh, tutorials. It's packed full of all kinds of value. Again, for those who post a project for show and tell on, on our Facebook timeline, uh, after the presentation, we will choose uh, a winner. Now, another thing about So Fun Club are the special price, uh, prices on the, on the goods we bring in. Now, uh, it's been a little more difficult because typically manufacturers ship in on consignment. That way we can bring in product, offer it a, a very incredible price, and then what we don't sell goes, goes back. Well, the vendors can't do that this time, so we have negotiated with two different vendors. One is the Daylight Company, and we're going to be featuring some of the Daylight products, and the other is Dora Carey from Orange Dot Quilts. And so what we're doing is we're pre-selling products at an incredible uh, uh, So Fun Club price, and we already have some coming in, but in 10 days we're going to make our, 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 a big order for those who have ordered the product, and then after that we'll do another order. But you don't want to miss out because this these specials will not last uh, past uh, July, and so you want to get your orders in at, at these special prices that I'll explain uh, shortly. So my show and tell is a continuation from the, from the very first a virtual so fun club. So let's come out on in and look at this here. Uh, so if you remember, this is the quilt that I was working on with the Solaris, where I scanned in a block and placed the stitches, uh, and the machine automatically stitched it out. Well, before that, back then it only had the, the top and batting, so I've fused the backing on with free fuse. We love this stuff. I think we've showed this the three different so fun club. Everybody should have this here. Now, uh, once I did that, then I took the sashing and I took the projected guidelines on the Solaris and aligned up the sashing so I was able to continue with a decorative stitch that matched the whole look of the patchwork quilt. Now, this is not completed, obviously. I've got something very special to show you on the border that I can't wait to show you in a month. Stay tuned for that. So now, let's have Juliana show you one of the featured Daylight products. Hi everyone, I'm here to show you guys the Daylight Halo Go magnifying lamp. It has a USB rechargeable battery and the brightness remains constant for a full eight hours. Let's see how it works. So you click the on switch and there's different levels of brightness that you can use. You can adjust to see your stitching you open this up, turn it for hand stitching or a closer view of your sewing machine. There is also times two magnification and times four magnification for a closer look. Isn't this amazing? Speaking of amazing, we have an amazing discount. The regular price on this lamp is $130, but order now with your club discount and it's only $89.99. If this goes missing, it wasn't me. Hi, it's Bianca, and today I want to talk to you about the Daylight Wafer LED Light Box. Uh, one reason that I like this box is that it's really good quality. Uh, the last one that we had was a lot smaller, and my mom got it from a store. Uh, I'm not going to say the name, but it rhymes with Shrikles. Uh Another thing that I really like about it is uh, the brightness. You can see that it's really bright, 
and you can adjust the brightness so if you want it to be like dimmer you can press this and it has a memory so it remembers the amount of brightness that you want and so I can make it as bright or as dim as I want and I also love that it has this ruler thing with centimeters and inches so that if you need to like measure anything you can use that and especially with the light box you can have the light on and you don't need to have a ruler that might move around everywhere um, this is also really good if you want to trace anything so this ladybug for example I can place this on it wherever I want and it will have the shape there and I can see it very clearly and I can just trace it over very easily. Hey Bianca. Uh-huh. Can I show you my favorite things? Yeah. My favorite thing about the wafer cutting tablets is the fact that you can actually purchase a cutting mat the size of the tablet to place it on the light box. And you can see how nice that is now. I can actually see, I can see my grid lines here. And I use this actually quite often because often in my demonstrations, I cut triangles, let's use a darker one so you can see it here, that are 60 degrees. Now, I tell you, I don't know, I've not figured out a good way to do this here because both my rulers and my mat have 60 degree markings. And I'm always trying to figure this out. So what I've learned is that I take a, a shape the size, in this case a triangle, of my uh, piece, so I can see through it, okay? And so what that does for me is I can line up here, these are four inch strips, and now it's not as critical for me to look at those grid lines, because I tell you one thing, um, I'm always trying to refigure that. And this right here makes it so that I can just take this here, cut that, boom, okay? Take this one right here, you can line it up again, it's just, it's just so much easier to be able to see it this way, and then you can move it, and there you go. Now I have a triangle. Perfect every single time. There are three different sizes of the wafer tablets. The wafer one is nine inches by 12 and a half inches. It has a uh, manufacturer suggested list price of $175, and the special uh, So Fun Club price is $119.99. Now, I have a special that I'm gonna tell you in addition to that in a moment. Our most popular, the one that we actually just demonstrated is the wafer two. This has a, an area of 12.6 inches by 17 inches. It has a manufacturer suggested list price of $275 and I searched the internet to find the lowest price and I went lower and I brought it down to $159.99. Now I, the only reason we're doing this is because we are gathering a large order that the manufacturer is sending. So get your order in. The finally, our, our largest tablet is the Wafer 3. It has a size of 18 inches by 23.6 inches. It has a manufacturer suggested list price of 200, excuse me, $375, and it's on sale. The club price is $219.99. But wait, there's more. If you enter coupon code MAT, M-A-T, at the time of checkout, you will get the corresponding cutting mat at no charge with your purchase. In addition to the club price, and by the way, we're offering free shipping for any order uh, over $49. So you get free shipping, you get the free mat that could be as much a value of $49, plus you get that incredible price. So hurry and get your order in because this will not last for long. We need to get those orders in from the manufacturer. Uh, but now I want to introduce uh, our guest speaker, her name is Dora Carey from Orange Dot Quilts, and she has some amazing quilts to show you with this, this exclusive trunk show. Take it, Dora. Hi, this is Dora Carey of Orange Dot Quilts, and in today's video, I want to share with you some of my patterns and the quilts that I made with them. Before I take you to the backyard to show you all the quilts I made and the patterns, I want to tell you a few words about me. I am Romanian. I uh, moved to the United States in 2001 and I became a citizen in 2008, uh, the same year I made my first quilt. In Romania, I was an engineer and a graphic and industrial designer, and you can see the influence of those two um, 
jobs and careers in my patterns. So um, I hope you're going to enjoy my short presentation of my quilts and uh, just so you know, the, the accent that I have cannot be helped. I know some of you made some comments during my first video about my accent, uh, but please know uh, that I cannot change it. I learned English in my late 20s and uh, that's why all the languages I speak, actually I speak with a Romanian accent. So when you try criticizing it, think about that. It cannot be changed. Thank you. The only one pattern is one of my favorites. It uses just one fabric and this is the one I used to create a much simplified one block wonder quilt. As you can see, um, this looks edgier and uh, a little bit fresher than the original One Block Wonders. Uh, in addition to that, we are not fussy cutting the fabric and instead of hexagons or octagons, we are using half square triangles. Uh, no waste in the fabric. There are three sizes in the pattern, four, four sizes in the pattern. Um, and super fun uh, to make quilt. Goes great with panels as well. One pattern, a little bit more labor intensive, is my take on trip around the world. And it's fun to make six fabrics plus a background. Uh, it uses the stringy, I mean, not stringy, it's strips. You are going to uh, sew strips together and then cut them in smaller pieces. There are several sizes in the pattern. Um, this is the one inch finished size. We also have the two inch finished. The same layout with the two inch finished size was going to be a king size but there are many other patterns in between uh, with world tour it's a spectacular quilt and it actually can be toned down i use really bright colors because that's my preference but it can be toned down with other color choices again world tour super fun arabesque is an amazing pattern foundation paper piecing very versatile you can really play with the placement of color in the pattern all the foundation papers are included as well as a color me page where you can create your own variation uh, the foundation paper piecing are actually square and i'll show you how they look with uh, with a square layout but this is what i did first this is the third quilt i ever made which should give you courage that you can make one too thank you the square arabesque that's how the papers are in the pattern as you can see you can integrate this inside in the center of a larger bed quilt or make a twin size quilt by adding borders on the top and the bottom it's a it's a spectacular quilt really this looks really raggedy but this is um tree skirt version of the arabesque this is how the foundation papers look on the back uh, with my, my annotations of course but you can also make this a tree skirt this is not finished just so you know i still need to add the binding and also cut one side but yeah it would make a great tree skirt so beautiful east west is one of those wonderful patterns that is simple inspired by Moroccan windows plus in the sashi there's a secondary design element that creates little plus signs I call it east-west for that <laughs> and um, it's absolutely spectacular I mean you can make one color monochromatic variations in the block I have used three different fabrics two across and two different ones across from those uh, but it's absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. Many more sizes in the pattern. Um, it's pretty easy. Just a little bit of matching that you have to be careful about matching the points, but that's it. Big pinwheels is my take on the pinwheels. I love pinwheel quilts. However, the bulky centers and the matching of the points was always a challenge. In this pattern I took care of those. What I did, I spread apart a little bit the points at the center of the pinwheels and that solves all your problems. This is a fun quilt to make. All the sizes are offered in the pattern. This is the baby size and let me show you what you can do with the layer cake. Layer full of split pinwheels uh, laid out on point. 
that option is given in the pattern so you could lay out on point all of the sizes this is a large size and it looks totally different this is a silk quilt so it's going to be made out of dupioni silk or stripey hsds which means half square triangles uses just half square triangles in a stripey fabric to create a really interesting effect so uh, it's an easy quilt to make very much fun the uh, stripes that i used are in the fabric so using a stripey fabric is recommended if you uh, want to create your own that's also an option but um, yeah that's it now if you think the back of the quilt is fun let's see the front so llama rama is a super fun quilt with llamas uh, including piecing and some embroidery all the embroidery stitches are described in detail inside the pattern and it's you know sky's the limit how much you want to embroider is your choice whether you want to do a lot or a little the only must do or the eyelashes so you have to put the eyelashes on the llama or else there are no llamas right <laughs> so let me show you what else you can make you can make a little pillow with just one block you can make a little pillow that is super decorative and here the tassels are actually 3d so they're applied on top of the not embroidered but applied Fun. Boho Chic. Boho Chic is one of my first quilt patterns and it's super super easy. It uses a layer cake and a jelly roll and actually not even the entire jelly roll and it comes together really fast. I made about a dozen of them for all of my friends um, and uh, it's very versatile depending on the jelly roll and layer cake that you use. You can go monochromatic, you can go romantic, you can go primary just and you know that in a layer cake and jelly roll everything is going to match right so you have no issues about making this quilt look amazing so let me show you a smaller size so this is a much smaller boho chic quilt uh, as you can see instead of uh, the whole layer cake we have used only 30 pieces or something like that in the pattern you have five different sizes and more information about how to make each size Flashback. Flashback, again, another very easy pattern. Uses half square triangles and squares. Works really great with layer cakes. You need two layer cakes for the accent squares, as well as yardage, eight, five fabrics. How many uh, you have on hand, even monochromatic would look great. This quilt was inspired by a woven pattern in my childhood coat, uh, a combination between houndstooth and herringbone so I call it herring's tooth <laughs> no it's flashback <laughs> the raggedy version of flashback is raggedy flashback surprise title there so this is made out of flannel with half of the seams all the bias seams are raggedy and it adds such a great dimension to the quilt but again, it is not more difficult than the original version. Uh, it has more texture. Touch 9 is my take on the traditional 9 touch quilt pattern. I love how changed this pattern is by just making the center square disappear. Uh, the, the look is much more modern, much more um, edgy and you can go black and white on this uh, it has been tried and is absolutely spectacular so this is a great quilt pattern it works pretty easy you use uh, strips to sew them together and then cut them in smaller pieces to make the blocks and it comes together fairly fast one of my favorite uh, things is the layout which is not a traditional layout so again uh, batch nine Fairly easy, works great with jelly roll strips. So that's another advantage. Fleece Queen is my 
try at Fusible Applique. It's inspired by dandelions. As you can see, uh, in the pattern, all these petals are practically uh, cut out of rectangle pieces. Jelly rolls work great. You can use jelly rolls. Um, there's not that much fabric required for the dandelion petals and uh, there's only a uh, requirement for the background and you use a whole cloth and if you don't have a whole cloth fabric of this size you can attach it really easily. So totally spring, fusible applique, amazing quilt. You can go monochromatic on this as well. I chose to use a jelly roll, a whole jelly roll and for each of these small rosettes you use just about this much four inches of a jelly roll strip so not much boxing play is a unique quilt pattern completely original it was based on a on a game in generation q make magazine it has large blocks and it plays with transparency and gradient it will work with multicolor blocks as well this is not necessarily a beginner pattern because it requires matching diagonal seams other than that super fun to make and easy once you get diagonal seams down you're good to go Pearl is a pattern inspired by the traditional farmer's daughter block it is fun to make big blocks many sizes many more sizes in the pattern um, versatile you can use um, a colored background if you want or you can use black and white newspaper background looks great newspaper print background um, yeah super fun is the very first pattern I created. I love this pattern. It is versatile. You can make the beads using foundation paper piecing, which is what I did here. You can also make them using string piecing, or you can use one fabric to make the entire bead. So I will show an example of that later on, but for these beads, foundation paper piecing, if you were thinking about learning that technique, this is pretty much the easiest pattern there is with foundation paper piecing just um, very straight lines using scraps is fine uh, the blocks in between the beads are large and easy to make fun 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 pattern more sizes in the pattern this is an example of a beads on a string with the beads created out of just one fabric each bead i try to make slightly different but they are made of one fabric they are not pieced at all the beads themselves and it still looks wonderful. They say that once you turn your hobby into a business, you should find a new hobby. Well, my hobby was crochet. <laughs> so that's my new hobby. And this is a huge granny square. Those of you who know crochet know what I'm talking about. This is a very simple to make quilt. You know, it's uh, the piecing is, is uh, straightforward and changing the colors around your huge granny square will change the look of the quilt and i'll show you another example soon but this is echoes or well, echoes in another color combination totally different look uh, this is a quilt that you can integrate in a larger quilt you can add borders all around to make it a queen size or king size you can add the top and bottom borders to make it a twin size or instead of large borders you can just continue adding strips the way i did I love, what I love also about this pattern is how it echoes, but it doesn't stay the same. Uh, it kind of changes as it echoes towards the outside from the center out. It's one of my first quilts to make, one of the first eight actually. And I was so excited about making this quilt to learn later on that it is a, kind of a log cabin we are working on this quilt with uh, quarters so we're going to make one quarter at a time and then put them together to create the quilt there are so many variations with these quarters i chose to do it this way and it does remind me of a motherboard this is a fairly easy pattern jelly roll friendly so pre-cut friendly and it takes you in different places according to the colors you use i'll show you some more examples but it's definitely a pattern that is suitable for beginners as well so how fun is this motherboard? Uh, this has a background that is uh, polka dots on dark gray, but see how different the look. Just by changing the background, the look is completely changed. This motherboard, I use two lapping fabrics. Each 
quarter of the block is a different fabric and uh, it, it completely changes the look again. Fixed by Luke Haynes and check out this fun bag. Thing I forgot to mention about motherboard is that it's a very versatile pattern. You can even add sashing in between the blocks, larger sashing. You can add piecing in the sashing. It's fun to make. More sizes in the pack. On the plus side is a quilt connected to a personal story of mine. I will share that at your next guild meeting if you have me. But now, to, what to know about this pattern is that it comes together in horizontal rows. So row by row, we put together this pattern. All quilt sizes are offered in the pattern. And it, it's really suitable for pre-cuts. You can work with jelly rolls, back quarter bundles, um, any other pre-cuts, really. This is suitable for that. For you, uh, on the plus side, uh, with leftover jelly roll strips, I don't know if you can see, but it looks amazing. And if you uh, zoom into the back, you will see the rows I was telling you about. Very fun. <laughs> Ooh. And this is another example of uh, on the plus side with a fat quarter pack and the plus signs are actually set on the diagonal so you can do that you can place your colors in the pattern there's a color me page in there actually not color me page but almost where you can place that um, the colors so you have a plan on how to put them together Heatwave is a quilt pattern that is very, very easy. Another quilt pattern fit for beginners. It was uh, inspired by a heatwave that came in our city. I was cooped up at home for two days and this is the quilt pattern that I came up with. I used my, my scraps, but it works beautifully using one yard each of five fabrics. And I'll show you an example of that. This uses five main color groups of scraps. So heat wave, and it's kind of a take on a rail fence pattern, you know, so yeah, very fun. Heat wave with five only fabrics. So there are only five fabrics in here instead of the scrap version that you've seen before. Um, and it, it looks great. It's a little heat wave. You've seen the large heat wave quilts before. Uh, the largest one, twin size, requires one yard each of fabric. This little one is a baby size and requires half yard each of five fabrics. And it's super adorable. And this is a quilt that you can finish in a day. I mean, I finished in a day, including the binding. So it's very easy to make. Another example of a heat wave. Different colors, different uh, fabrics, same great little quilt. H bag is my most popular pattern. This bag is very easy to make. It does require the dowels, but other than that, you're good to go. There are two patterns associated with the H bag, the regular H bag and the jumbo. This is the jumbo. And let me show you how the regular, so this is the regular size. <laughs> when you put them side by side, you see the difference in size. So they come in one pattern and then we have, we have the midi and the mini that come together in another pattern called mini midi H bag. The mini and the midi have interfacing to keep them, uh, to help them keep their shape. I want to show you my mini H bag and how much it can take inside. And if you can see, it's my crochet patterns and projects and yarn and all kinds of magazine so it's a really roomy bag although it looks so small it's roomy and what i love is that it stands up when you have a project to work on
for watching. If you want to hear more from me, uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you would like to see, what kind of content. Remember to like and subscribe this video and um, yeah, just ask any question, I'll try to answer. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for a So Fun Club. And don't forget to post your projects for a chance to win that great prize and get your orders in to get these incredible deals. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.